Good afternoon, girls. Well, what's cooking in Mary's kitchen today? Uh, something that was cooking in Mary's kitchen last week. And Mary so cleverly deleted it from her video portfolio in Mary's kitchen. And no sooner I deleted it than a whole bunch of girls were asking me for the recipe again. So here we are again with lemony chicken tarragon. Who's on? There's four people on, so say hello. Hey, Teresa Adams, how are you? Just making sure my pan's not on. That's a good way to check if your pan's on. Hi, Jody. Good to see you. And Peter, hi. Peter, how are you doing in isolation up there? Hey, Brandy. Good morning. And Alan from Belgium. See, Alan, I remember. Hi, Suzanne. Good morning. And Deborah, you're up early. <laughs> hi ho, Cookie. Yes. <laughs> hey, Barbara. Nice to see you. What's your weather like, Helen? As you can see, it's a little cloudy here today at the moment. You can hear the seagulls going around, so you'll hear a lot of screeching. Um, when I'm putting my food out, hi Aileen, how are you? You got to see your dad okay. Did you pick up some soil from Aldi's? Hi Susan, that's my niece Susan. We just hooked up on Zoom, we're practicing, so we're hoping to get on to Zoom later on. Uh, hi Wilma and Linda and Jenny. We had fun yesterday, one of my girlfriends, it was her birthday, Lorna Rayburn, I don't know if she'll come on. Hi Rusty and Tina. Anyway, there was 11 girls on this Zoom. You can imagine, all crazy blondes and uh, all talking at the same time. So <laughs> needless to say, I have no idea what went on yesterday, <laughs> except it was good to see everybody. It was really quite fun. So uh, I'm hoping, I don't know if any of you set up that Zoom, but I would strongly advise you set up an adjudicator to run the meeting because that meeting was total chaos. It wasn't really a meeting, it was just a clever to get together with all the girls. Hi Trish, how are you? You're sewing some more chilies. Oh Trish, I'm so jealous about your chilies. She's got some fantastic plants in her greenhouse. <sighs> Peter just said, watch out for the seagull doo-doo. <laughs> well, you do have to watch out for that, but hopefully they won't get too close. Hey, Cindy and Lori, Joe, hi. Good morning from California, lovely. Good, Aileen, you got your soil. My friend Aileen wanted to do some planting today, but she didn't have any soil, so I gave her a good idea. I told her to go outside Aldi, photograph the bag of soil she wanted with the code on it, the price code, and any plant she wanted, go into the shop, buy her groceries, and then just show on her phone what she wanted, two of that and two of that. They trust you there. Uh, plus, they, you know, who's going to be dragging a bunch of soil around the shop with them? Hi, Joanne. How are you? And Sylvia. <laughs> My friend uh, Sylvia and David. David put a funny one on today. He says, what should I do today? Uh, go out for a bike ride, all day drinking and listening to music, then order a carryout. And it's just starting to rain, but I'm going to sit here through the rain for you because I can't move. Hey Lynn, how are you girl down on your crazy streak today? And your white feather collecting. Hi Patty and Monica. How are you Monica? You're on a house party. Oh wow, you should invite me on one of your house parties. Lynn Wicks, um, I got a good idea. We could do a Zoom and you and I could cook together. And we could invite maybe 10 girls or something to come on and cook. What do you think? And Nicole. Devanzo. Thank you, Nicole. Thanks for coming on. Nicole's in New York, and I appreciate you coming on, Nicole. That's great. Great to see you. And Angie, a big hello from Montreal, Quebec. Wow, lovely. It's just starting to rain. <laughs> uh, I might need an umbrella in a minute. Hey, Jackie. No, no. And everything's fine. We don't care about a bit of rain. Hey, Lorna, how are you? Starting to rain here in Sunny Dunny, which is unusual but I don't care. And Nicole, thanks so much for the book order. That was really appreciated. And I'm gonna personalize them for all your friends, just as you said. Hi, Angela. Hey, Kathy. Uh, we might have to put the umbrella up. Have you got the umbrella there? No, it's downstairs, isn't it? We got a bit of a problem. It's just starting to rain, so I'm going to have to. Yeah, that's perfect. I'm going to get a hand umbrella. 
my probably my golfing umbrella. Hi, Katie. How are you? That sounds like an epic Zoom. That's what I think. A little cooking Zoom. And Lynn Forrester and I can do some cooking together. Hi, Maureen. Maureen, we got to hook up. we got to do our hula hooping. I'm just sitting in the rain right now. I thought it might rain, but anyway, I don't care. Hey, Sylvia, how are you? And thank you very much, Sylvia. I'm glad you like the book. And Barbara, what's cooking today? Well, what's cooking in Mary's kitchen today is uh, lemony garlic tarragon chicken. Hi, Jane, how are you? Hey, Les, how are you, Les? How are you doing up there in quarantine? You got the best seat in the house, that's for sure. It's just raining. <laughs> but anyway, say la vie. Who cares? A, a little rain never hurts somebody shouting and out and about. Hey, Jane, how are you? Nice to see you. And Michelle, good to see you, and Kathy. Thank you, Kathy, well done on walking around without your uh, uh, wheelchair today and only your cast. And Annalicia, how are you? Chicken, yes, we're making chicken today. Oh, you're cooking pancakes, boo-boo pancakes, well done. Oh, great, Jane, I'm glad to hear. I got all my squares done for the blanket but I haven't learned how to put them all together yet, so I'm working on that. Melody, how are you? You're having a coffee poolside. I wish I was having a coffee poolside. Beautiful day in Toronto, wow. Kathy Piper, hi. Oh, wait, Nicole, I think your friends will really like this one. This is a really nice Italian dish. Okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Caught up brawling. I think I might have to... I think I might have to start cooking quick. Can you get the bigger umbrella? I think it's downstairs. Have a look. We've got a big, huge umbrella here. And I've got a stand here, which is perfect for barbecues because it always rains in Scotland. You made it, Monica. <laughs> well, you know my friend Cheryl Muir. Cheryl, I don't know if you're on here right now, but Cheryl made the ratai. She made the, the uh, onion badgies, and she made another dish. What was the other one? She made three dishes. Oh, she made the aloo gobi, the cauliflower and potato. Now, all of those are on Mary's Kitchen. Those are all curry dishes. This is quite funny, isn't it? Sitting in the rain. <laughs> and uh, good morning from Minnesota, Laurie. Thank you very much. I haven't got any sugar out here, Laurie, so don't worry about that. <laughs> uh, Donna, you're in Florida, and the weather's great there. And I know, Kathy, you're starting to walk around a little now. That's great. Your plaster came off. Oh, off your bedroom ceiling. Oh, dear, you'll have to get that fixed. I'm hoping to get an umbrella here in a second, but we'll see what happens. This is the first time this has happened, but it's kind of fun. <laughs> We just have to get cook, keep calm and cook on, right? Here comes the big brawly, so just excuse me for a minute while I get the stand. Hang on. Are you just going to do that? Huh? Hang on for a minute. I'll be right back. Well, that's no good. Oh, I can't really put it in the middle of the table. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I've got an umbrella hold right here. Because <laughs> normally it goes through the middle of the table here. Wait, maybe we can do it. Uh, hang on. Can you put it through? No, put it through the middle of the table. But I'll have to hang on to this, everything here. Can you put it through? Oh, shit, the weight of it. Hang on, kids. We're working, we're working here. This is more fun. It's crazy stuff. Okay, there you go. Okay, can you get it on? Uh, I'll help. Hang on, we're coming back, we're coming back. Okay. No, I'm stuck on something. Okay. That will do. Yeah. There. Take that one away. There we go. We're back in action. Thank you. I've got to thank, <laughs> thank you. Sometimes, sometimes uh, has uses. Put my face in. No. <laughs> Just for a laugh. 
<laughs> well, you can if you want. Say hello. Hello, that was me. <laughs> hello. The umbrella rescuer. Hello. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Hi, Anne and Lynn. <laughs> it's real life. It's real life in this kitchen, that's for sure. And I don't know uh, whether Pamela is on here, but yeah, Pam, there's nothing, uh, everything's real in this kitchen. Hey, Leslie, hi. And Angie. <laughs> <laughs> Funny. I should have got this up earlier, actually, because it's a very nice umbrella. It's the Bellhaven Best umbrella, but it's only one that the bars get. So, when somebody that I know gave us this very nice umbrella. <laughs> hey, Nancy, hi. So, I think we better get cooking. We've got over 70 odd people on here watching at the moment. Thanks to whoever helped, Monica says. Deserves an extra <laughs> serving. <laughs> He does for sure. Hey Linda, that, well that was a quick sort of thing that we had to get sorted out because the rain really, really, really came down quite hard there. So hi Kathy, how are you? And Connie, I better get cooking here, eh? Hey Sarah, just so many new people are coming on so I just want to say hello to y'all. And Cheryl and Katie. Katie, how's your cooking? Is it improving? And Serena, hi. And Cheryl, I just want to thank all you girls for following me here on Mary's Kitchen. I really, really enjoy cooking for you. I hope my friend Fiona's on here too. I think she might be coming on. She said she was anyway. And uh, I really enjoy cooking for you, teaching you little tips. And I've been cooking for pro probably most of my life. Uh, probably a lot of it out of necessity because my mother wasn't a very good cook. Uh, anyway, she was a wartime baby, so... She uh, really didn't have that many ingredients to work with, so she really didn't understand ingredients. So I think I didn't have my first pizza pie until I was about 15 years old. And that was because my brothers had a gang of his friends downstairs in the rec room. We used to call that the lower room in the house. And that was their kind of games room and everything. And he, he invited all his friends all playing poker or whatever they were doing down there playing cards. And they ordered a great big Visca's pizza. And I know a lot of my Canadian friends in Hamilton will remember Visca's. It's probably still there. Hi, Fiona. I should be singing in the rain. <laughs> I am singing in the rain. <laughs> and from Newport. Hi, Janice. How are you? Oh, Janice, that's okay. You can just, I'll tell you, just go on my website, www.maryjoancalder.com, and you'll find all the information. You'll find lots of recipes there, too. We're adding recipes there regularly. And uh, also, there's a little, uh, we've just opened up another tab on there for pet treats. So, Mary's Kitchen Pet Treats. <laughs> so, I'm planning on adding a few more uh, as soon as I can get a hold of the ingredients, because this... <laughs> Oh, good. Katie's saying she's becoming a better cook with my cookbook. Good. You're becoming a little chef. I'm big chef. You're little chef. That's okay. Every big chef needs a little chef to help them. <laughs> Julie, hi, and Wendy. So anyway, my brother ordered this pizza from Viscas, and I know my friends, Jeanette Hunter, she's on here. Hi, Evie. How are you? I just saw you come on, and uh, David and Sylvia Avery. They'll all remember Visca's. That was our favorite, favorite pizza haunt. Oh, the best pizzas you ever had. In fact, that's one of the things I'm doing while I'm in lock-in and isolation at the moment. I'm learning to make the best pizza crust because I want to make one day for you a fantastic pizza and easy and easy so we don't have to raise the yeast and do all these kind of things. So that's something, a project I'm working on at the moment. Hey, Evie, I'll tell you, the, you know, the bistro we went to in Florida, they're um, doing curbside I think for Mother's Day I don't know when the menu starts I don't know whether you got an email on it I'll excuse me I'll send it to you it's a great day Janice it is <laughs> yeah I'll send you the email Evie uh, because I just got it from them today and I sent it on to Gail so that they knew that they could go order their Mother's Day dinner if they wanted. So Les, I hope you're listening. Mother's Day dinner at the little bistro. You know the bistro we went to when I was in Florida? Lovely place. And the best Bloody Marys you've ever had. Oh my goodness, they were stacked. Oh, they had everything on them. Lovely. Okay, girls, let's get cooking. Let's get cooking in the rain. All right, we're going to make the lemon garlic tarragon chicken again. Now, I'll just tell you, I kind of ran out of tarragon. I've only got probably about uh, 
tablespoon here, but that's okay because I'm going to add some mixed herbs in here as well, um, just to pat it out a little bit. So let me get my little cooker going, put it on at five or six, and I'm going to put a good glug of olive oil in there. Can you see the pan? I'd rather you saw the pan than the ingredients, but can you see the pan okay? Everything's soaking wet. There's a few little fresh herbs I just picked out of my garden. I'll just put them there. There, can you see that okay now? Yeah, because I like you to see the pan. <laughs> it's steaming up because it's wet. There, yeah, it's all right. There we go. Okay, this has got a little water in it, that's why. So a little bit of lug of olive oil. Two to three tablespoons of olive oil in there. And in there we're going to put our onions. So I've diagonally di crossed my, chopped my onions because I don't like them all chopped up into little squares. I like them in long pieces like this. So I cut my onion in half and then I just go along the half moon and slice it up. So I just think it looks nicer in a dish when you're cooking. There, this is going good now. This dish is probably going to taste absolutely superb. It's made for love, with love, for you in the pouring rain. Remember camping. When you were camping, it doesn't matter what the weather is, you've got to still cook and get something to eat. So just cook those onions for a few minutes, a couple of seconds. Onions you should cook until they're really kind of translucent, but we haven't got time for all that. I'm trying to make this, this is kind of my one pan cooking series. Hi Brenda and Trish, how are you? And Carrie and Maggie and May. Ah. Yes, Nate, you can find that uh, information on my website, Mary Joan Calder, just remember that. <clears throat> in fact, it's on Mary's Kitchen at the above in the title, MaryJoanCalder.com, so it's easy for you to find if anybody's interested in the cookbook, it's there. And uh, I thank everybody who's bought one, and I thank you for all my followers here. We've almost hit 5,000, by the way. That's amazing an old prehistoric dinosaur like me. <laughs> so all these young kids get all these followers and stuff like that. But this for me is fun and it, I know that I'm teaching you something and you're learning from what I'm teaching you. And I'm teaching you easy recipes and something that's really, really delicious. Hi, Elida. I haven't seen you for a little while. The smoke's coming right in my face, of course. There we go. Now I'm going to put in three garlic cloves in here. There we go. And in here I'm going to put, I am going to put my tarragon in here and that's of course the, all the remains of the bottle. So that flavors into the olive oil. I'm going to put a little bit of mixed herbs. Now I haven't put that in the ingredients up above because uh, when I did the ingredients up above I didn't realize I didn't have very much Tarragon. So I'm going to put about a teaspoon of mixed herbs in there as well. A little pepper, just to cook with the onions. And a couple of chili flakes. Do you know me? I love my chili flakes. There we go. <laughs> just a couple. Or you could use a fresh chili if you wanted to cut up. But this really isn't about heat, this dish. This is really about lemon and garlic. And I'm sorry if you don't see me very well, but it'll be worth it in the end. <laughs> I had the hugest long sleep yesterday. Hey Robin. <laughs> That's your holy trinity. Evie's just saying this is her holy trinity. Garlic and onions. Yeah, mine too, Evie. I think that if I went to the shops and I couldn't get garlic, onions, and chilies, I don't know what I'd be able to cook for you. But I thought this week, um, I've got a few ideas in mind, and if you like the idea, let me know. Oh good, Lynn. I'm glad you can see me and Helen. Yeah, this is my holy trinity too. Now I've got three chicken breasts cut up here. We're going to add those next. Now I cut these into goujons. Uh, I don't want to touch the chicken because you know how crazy I am about touching. That's like a goujon of chicken. It's just sliced up very, very thin. And you mustn't put chicken on any surfaces. Uh, if you're cutting chicken up with a board, and a knife, you must get that in the sink immediately. You mustn't get a cloth and start wiping down surfaces that you're wiping chicken juice off the counter. You must 
not do that, okay? Because if you do, you're going to pass uh, salmonella and you're going to get very, very ill. Now look how pretty this looks. It's a little bit of chili in there. You can see all right. I'm going to put a few of the lemons in here. I've got two lemons here. And I'm just going to put a few in there just at a minute. <coughs> I've got a couple of rosemary sprays. Again, it's not in the instructions above, but I'm just saying you can use your imagination if you have lovely fresh herbs. Chicken mars itself well with things like tarragon, with rosemary, uh, with sage, it's marvelous, with thyme. And if you want to go into the spices, it mars itself well with um, coriander, uh, with uh, cumin, with turmeric, and all the Indian spices. Chicken is such a versatile dish and we can make it taste so wonderful by adding various different kinds of herbs and spices. And really, men, Forrester, you're going to like this because this chicken is kind of poached rather than really fried. I just want to get some color onto the meat. I don't want it too colorful. And then I'm going to add my liquids on here. And we're really just going to poach this. I'm just going to let those lemon slices fry a little bit. I'm going to throw a bay leaf in there because I've got a bay leaf tree here behind me. I think you can see it there. Yeah. And I've got some fresh rosemary in here behind me. I just picked a couple bits because I thought, if you've got a fresh herb garden, don't hesitate. You can tie these together in what they call a little bouquet garni in some thyme and tie it with a little piece of thread and throw that into soup pots or anything and then you can just pull it out at the end and it flavor, puts the flavor right through your soup. That's called the bouquet garni. Okay? Quite often when I'm making my French onion soup, which is in the cookbook, which is the most fantastic French onion soup you'll eat, um, I put bouquet garni in quite a bit. I put two big bouquet garnis in there. Okay, so that's fried up quite nicely there. Now we're going to put a cup of chicken stock. Okay? About a cup of chicken stock in there. Yeah, I might as well add the rest. There we go. Now I just use, if you ask me what kind of chicken stock I'm using, I just use good old Noor. Good old Noor chicken stock cubes. I'm not getting paid by Noor to say that, but that's what I use. They make very it's very, very simple to get stock, but you can also buy stock in your uh, little meter containers. But for me, this measures up a perfect quantity and what I need, and I can get it all measured out perfectly. So, actually, this dish, I've got some white wine here. I'm going to pour some, about a cup of white wine in there as well. Yes, I'm very generous when it comes to my wine. <laughs> And what I do now is I put my rest of my lemons in here. Let's just get them broken up. Yeah, there we go. Now you're going to see what happens is when this is cooking, the juice from the lemon. Oh, I'll tell you, this is something you can get in the States quite easily. Hey, Sherry and Petra, hi. Is um, lemon pepper? This lemon pepper has sort of had it at the moment. I just put a little sprinkle of lemon pepper. I love that lemon pepper. I love it on salads as well when I'm eating Oop. in the States. I love lemon pepper. I use it a lot. And the last thing I'm going to do here, I could have put this in sooner, is I'm going to put a whole bulb of garlic, including the skin. All right, I'm going to take the cloves apart. like so, but I'm leaving the skin on there. I'll just take as much skin, like the outer skin off, and I'm going to just drop them in. They get lovely and soft, and when you're eating them, you just run them through your teeth, and they're so good for you. Hey, Maureen, lemon pepper. Next time I go, I think you can buy it here now. I'm not sure. I haven't really seen it. I bring a lot of stuff over from the States to cook things like, uh, what's that one? Slap your mama saw. Slap your mama spice that I bought in New Orleans. And I buy a lot of stuff in the States that I see that we don't have here. Like panko breadcrumbs and that kind of stuff. There we go. Yeah. So I've got a whole clove. Can you see that okay, nice and clearly? 
Yeah, you can see that dish cooking, can't you? So we got, uh, first we, uh, now I used onion. You can use leeks if you want. Use red onion if you want, okay? So you've got a variety of things there to use. Um, so I cooked the onion in a couple of good gulps, gulps of olive oil first, and then I added three cloves of chopped garlic in there. And then I added my herbs, a good heat teaspoon of tarragon. If you don't have tarragon, put mixed herbs in, okay? Mixed herbs are like sage, thyme, oregano, basil, all mixed together, which, are, which is great for Italian food. I put a little bit of black pepper, I put a little bit of crushed chili, or you could put a fresh chili in if you want, but I think it works better with the plate. Now what I'm going to do with this, is I'm going to like, cook this probably for the best part of probably about 30 minutes on a sort of medium to low heat, and I'm going to let a lot of that juice evaporate off there so it really gets con condensed and the flavor, excuse me, becomes kind of perfect, I'm <laughs> so free becomes really, really intense. So it's a really nice flavor. Hi, Frith Wiggins, how are you? Yes, French onion au gratin, Donna, that's it. And it's absolutely fantastic. Do try and make it sometime. Now, to finish this dish off, after you finish cooking this for 20 or 30 minutes, get some of that liquid away, you can see. And what you're gonna get is a really nice reduction in there. And you're your chicken is going to be nicely poached, Lynn, because I know you like that. Your garlic's going to be beautifully poached, the ones in the, you see, in the um, skin on. And you're just going to run those through your teeth. The lemons are going to break right down and the juice is going to come all out and go right into the wine and the stock. And <clears throat> all your herbs are going to infuse in there, infuse, interfuse, <laughs> infuse in there. Now. After that's cooked for 20 or 30 minutes, what you could do is hand, put in a, cut up some green beans or some asparagus handful and just throw them in and cook them the last sort of five minutes. You don't want them cooking too much. You don't want a big soggy green bean and you don't want a soggy bit of asparagus. You want something with a little bit of bite in it, okay? That's what's really important when you're cooking a simple, easy dish. Make sure everything's lovely and fresh and delicious. Now, I don't have any green beans and I don't have any asparagus, but I do have some spinach. But that is not going in until one minute before serving, because I want that vibrant and green. I don't want it all creepy and wrinkled up. And I want it really nice and green, so I'm just gonna pop that in in the last minute, but I just wanted to show you about it here. I'm probably gonna put double that in, actually, to be honest with you. And um, <clears throat> that'll cook. It'll just need a minute cooking in that hot sauce. I'm just going to turn that down a bit because I'm just going to let it cook gently and just say hello. I hope that that's a lot of people and I serve it, yes, Monica, over basmati rice or long grain rice or any kind of rice that you would like. No, Frith, this is not. This recipe is in Mary's Kitchen, um, which you'll find the recipe just above the video, etc. And uh, so, no, I put on a lot of new recipes in Mary's Kitchen. Some that are obviously not in my cookbook, some I cook from my cookbook, but... Oh, you're coming up in the garden, so Pam, you'll be able to put some of this in your chicken dish when, when your uh, asparagus is ready. It's really, really good, Kathy, this recipe. It's absolutely delicious. <laughs> uh, Lynn, you don't need wine. Just use the chicken stock and maybe just double up on it a little bit. Maybe put one and a half cups of chicken stock or if you have any sort of cider or anything like that. Uh, wine or cider, I wouldn't go on to any other sort of alcohols uh, with this dish. Oh, you got no voice, you're trying to catch me up. Carolyn Butt, she's got no voice on hers. I know, I wish you had smell vision too, because all she can smell is the lemons cooking, the lovely herbs cooking with that. Yeah, Lynn. No, it's not a problem. Just one and a half cups to two cups of chicken stock. Okay, put one and a half in. If you feel you need a little bit more liquid, that's fine. Hey, Donna. Thank you. I'm having a beautiful day in the rain here. Oh, you're going to make it tonight. Well, what I'm trying to do is, just to let you know, Trish, I'm trying to put the event out there, and I'm trying, I always put what's cooking with Mary, and then um, on the details, I say what's cooking, and generally, 
I'm trying to give the ingredients what I'm going to be using that day. So if you do want to cook along with me, uh, you'll have their ingredients and you'll be able to cook with me. Because I'm not doing it any, you know, video great speed or anything. I'm just doing it naturally in front of you. So if you wanted to cook alongside me, that would be great. My friend Denise, uh, I don't know whether she's on or not, but she said to me, Oh Mary, please let me know what your ingredients are. Oh, Linda, it's easy to get the book. Just go on my website, uh, www.maryjoancalder.com. And if you look on Mary's Kitchen up at the top, if you go down, you'll see a lot of recipes and a lot of videos that I've done in the past. And my friend Cheryl Muir, she went Indian the other day, so she made the ratai, the onion badgie, the aloo gobi. The only thing that was missing was the spicy prawn curry, so she could have had the whole thing there homemade. So instead of going for a takeaway Indian, she went and she made that uh, herself and she told me it was really yummy. Also the ratai, which is made from yogurt and vegetables, etc., you could serve beautifully on a sweet potato, which is absolutely lovely. Hey Susan, how are you? I hear your beaches are opening up tomorrow morning there in Florida, St. Pete's Beach. Is that true? Oh, you're welcome, Linda. I try to put on like a day or two beforehand. I was thinking of maybe showing you to make a couple of dressings this week uh, for like hopefully if we're going to get a summer and it's not raining to use for uh, say putting on your salads and putting an options out there for people to choose if you're having a barbecue or something to put a couple of different type of dressings instead of buying them in the bottle. Oh well done Lynn. Well the one, the tortilla wraps are great and they're lovely for making sandwiches out of the one I love for the Indian food is the sweet potato wrap, which is like a sweet, it's like a chapati, and it's just two ingredients. It's one cup of sweet potato mashed and one cup of your, I'd say, whole meal, meal flour, and then uh, mixed all up, no, no further liquid or anything, divvied up into even balls, rolled out and just fried in a frying pan like this, a nonstick frying pan. And very, very simple, very delicious to serve with a spicy curry, which you'll find here in the videos in Mary's Kitchen if you scroll down. There's lots of good recipes. If you look on my website, um, maryjoancalder.com, there's lots of recipes. There's uh, several recipes under appetizers, soups, um, uh, main courses, uh, desserts, etc. And we're adding all the time to that. And there's also a pet section in there for anybody who missed that earlier. Hi, Joni. Oh, yeah, I like those sweet potato wraps, too. So listen, girls, I hope you enjoyed that from rainy, rainy Scotland. And uh, I hope you're all fine in your lock-in if you're on your own. Uh, I hope this is a moment of your day that lifts you up and lifts your spirits up. And... Uh, Oh, a lot of cars back in town, Susan's saying, oh boy, Florida. Uh, I think you're opening up too soon, but anyway, that's only my opinion. Oh, thank you so much, Beth. Well, listen, girls, thanks so much, and thank you so much for following me here on Mary's Kitchen. Uh, we're nearly up at 5,000 followers, and uh, not too far off anyways, which is just great, and it's thanks to you. and. Also, I really appreciate the following because it makes it all worthwhile to come and cook and share some of my kitchen tips with you. Ah, good, Lynn. I hope you will try this. Listen, so you don't need alcohol for it. You just need a, a, a cup and a half of uh, chicken stock. Or you can always add a little bit more if you need, feel you need a bit more. But let this cook down. You must let this juice evaporate, evaporate a little bit. You want some juice because you want it. When you're putting your rice out, you want to put some of the juice on your rice, which really makes it taste fantastic and so lemony and so lovely. Oh, you're on your own, Petra. I'm sorry. I know. It's very sad. I've got a lot of friends who are on their own, too. So I hope this just brings a little joy into your house for, for a half an hour and gives you something to think about what to cook for the next day. Because even if you made this dish for, for, it's for two people, but you could easily uh, save half of us for the next day, all right, to save you cooking for the next day. <laughs> yeah, oh Lynn, um, I, I would continue letting this cook. I just turned it off because I'm going to put it on the, on the stove when I get back in the house again. I, or I might just let it cook here. But yeah, just give it a little stir and you'll see once the juice gets down to about half, that's about where you want to be. And you're going to get your, uh, your lemons melting into that 
juice as well, so that's why I call it my lemony garlic chicken tarragon. So, anyways, girls, I hope that uh, the rest of your day is good. I hope you get a, a chance to get out and have some exercise. Oh, while it's cooking down, then just on a medium heat, okay? So, uh, on your... I don't know what kind of cooker you have, but just on a medium heat, you can tell. You just want a really tiny bubble. And just as long as you can see it bub bubbling, but not too much, because you want, as it's bubbling, while it's bubbling, it's evaporating, okay? So right now, nothing is evaporating. It's just staying as is. But when I start cooking this dish again, and the bubbles come up, it starts evaporating into the air, and then it thickens up. You can also add, at the very end, if you wanted a dollop of uh, fresh cream, or you could add a dollop of creme fraiche if you wanted. That always makes it taste even more rich and nice, but I just serve it like this. Um, it's not so fatty. <laughs> uh, no, Karen, this isn't. This is just on my Mary's Kitchen page right here. This is a recipe that I'm just sharing with you today. This is uh, not, but this recipe is for you. It's here in my kitchen page, and the ingredients are after the video, I think. When I press finish here and publish, the ingredients will all be listed there. So very, very easy for you to get and write down. Okay? So listen, you girls, have a wonderful day. And it was great to see you. And thanks for coming on. And again, thanks very much for following me here on Mary's Kitchen. I really appreciate it. Lots of love to you all. And have a great day. I'll see you in a couple of days. And I'll put the event out, what I'm going to be doing. If you'd like to see a couple of new dressings, uh, I'll be happy to do that for you. Okay, but I got some ideas. I got lots of ideas. Don't worry. Have a great day. All right. Love you. And remember, if you see someone without a smile, give them yours.